That's all dirty on the toe. Stop. Yeah. You've been stubbing your shit or what? Try and get his shoes in the shot, would you? No. You want to start off with an intro? I will, yeah. Is, okay. that, is that cool? Go for it. I'm Jim Wilson from Grand Teton Harley-Davidson, and this is Shane Fredrickson, sales manager at Grand Teton Harley-Davidson. Uh, we're here today to kind of go over some of the new changes and differences between the new model 2024 Rogue Glide and uh, the previous model 2023 Rogue Glides. Two schools of thought. We're gonna do a little bit of representation as far as old school and new school is concerned, based upon some looks and some technology as well. For all intensive purposes, we're both kind of old school guys, but you know, since I'm mentally about 12 years old, they made me take the technology side. <laughs> Handles are much better than I do. I'm more of an analog kind of guy. Nothing wrong with that. And that's, that's kind of the nicety of being able to showcase not only the old school mentality in, in a 2023 and the new school mentality in the 2024, but highlight the differences in the segue between the two bikes. So you guys as viewers can see kind of a, a first aspect the same as we are. So this is the first time we've actually been able to physically see and touch these bikes in, in the physical. So it's really nice to be able to highlight the differences and see those differences. Because it's greater than just um, technology, right? And Correct. aesthetics. There's, Correct. there's some performance Absolutely. upgrades and there's some actual physical changes to the bike. It honestly, is gonna enhance rider comfort and performance confidence correct? and comfort right yeah. the two most important things on a motorcycle you guys confidence and comfort and they've focused the changes that they've done on on the aesthetic value based upon those aspects they're trying to make the bikes perform better ride better and ultimately for the consumers themselves for for you guys as the viewers for us as sellers we're all in this gamut together we're all riders so the idea is to make the bike perform better for the ultimate end user. And I think that's really what they've accomplished. And I think one of the things that we would be remiss if we didn't point out is, is that previous to 2024, we had three different versions correct. of this bike, right? We had the standard, we had the special, and then we had the ST. That is correct. Right? So we had three, three different powertrains. We had mm -hmm. the 107, 114, and the 117 available in those units. And now we've got one model that kind of blended it all together and it comes with the 117. Every single one of them comes with the 117 cubic inch motor. Is that correct? That is correct, with the exception of the Limiteds. The Ultra Limited and the Rogue Glide Limited still have that 114 motor in it, which is a great engine. The, the Rogue Glide and the Street Glide are where they put the focus on that new motor, and it is gone to that just that 117 as the standard. Correct? And been inspired by the race team, right? That is correct. Nice. So a, a lot of the changes that we're seeing uh, are, are directly from the results that we've seen in the Bagger Racing League, actually, for the last couple of years. Uh, in the media alone with the release from Harley this year, we were able to see uh, a couple of guys really kind of shredding it up and having fun on the STSEs. And, and that's the kind of rideability that I'm looking forward to, to be honest with you, Jim. So they, so they not only did they address maybe a performance issue but uh, from the powertrain, but they also enhanced uh, suspension and rideability. Is that correct? I mean, yes, sir. I think I, if I'm not mistaken, we've got three inches more travel in the suspension, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, and, and the idea is to provide a little bit more travel so you can utilize the suspension more appropriately. And we've got some additional adjustment that's available in the new suspension as well. And that's where we're gonna get some of that control feature back into that game. So as we change not only our mindset from rideability, but the performance aspects based upon passenger or weight bearing. Right. So now we can control a little more holistically right out of the box what those features are doing for us. But tr traditionally, uh, the adjustment on the suspension was mainly focused on weight bearing and, and load. That is correct. correct. Comfort. Right. Comfort is where they were putting the focus. And now we have an adaptation where we can a little more performance. A little more performance as well, right? So yes, sir. we really want to cut up the corners. We can um, adjust the suspension to be able to do so. Yes, that nice. is correct. Uh, and, and so for example, Jim, one of, the, one of the features that's going to be a direct advantage for the riders that we're, that we're going to talk about is the fairing design itself. And that's one of the things that's going to be hugely debated upon is whether or not, oh, I don't like it or whether or not, oh, I do like it, right? Perception is the reality to the individual. But whether or not somebody does or doesn't like it, it is the reality that it does reduce the amount of buffeting that the rider and the passenger experience and gives the rider a better control and feedback in handling and feel for the motorcycle. So they did some work in 2014 when they when, the, when they introduced the Rushmore project and they did some wind tunnel testing there, right? And we noticed a, a, a 
dramatic Drastic. change. Yes, sir. Difference in, in, in even in the, the tradi traditional shark nose fairing. But now this is more contoured and they've actually taken those contours and they've moved it through the entire bike, right? So they didn't focus just on the fairing. They actually led that, all of that wind tunnel technology carry through to the contour of the, the entire bike. More of a sweep to the bike this year. And again, the idea is to be able to take what they already did so well and enhance that so we get more control, more comfort, more value based out of the bike itself. So again, we're not just aesthetics. We are everything had a performance. Is done with an eye towards rideability. Outstanding. Yes, sir. One of the things I noticed um, initially, the, the height of the bars and the seating position, um, I thought the seat was extremely comfortable. I was actually a little bit surprised. They've made some and, nice changes there. And I was really happy with the changes in the handlebars. Absolutely. The aesthetic value looks good, but the rideable value exceeds anything that you're gonna be able to visually tell between the motorcycles itself. Just sitting on it on the showroom floor, you can feel the bike has a little bit more of a center balance, right? It feels more comfortable underneath me as, as a rider. Yeah, right? the balance is really wonderful. And it's lighter too, right? Uh, 16 pounds? Yes, sir, that, on, is, on this that model? is correct. We're down to 802 pounds of shift on this motorcycle. So that's, that's a nice little weight savings. And again, we see that directly based upon the performance aspects of the motorcycle. And pretty um, remarkable that you can actually feel yes. that 16 pound difference. It, yes. you it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're picking the bike up and then and when you're riding it and the balance and the performance, the, the difference in the weight is noticeable. It is a direct relationship to the throttle as well, sir. Yes. <laughs> Outside of that, again, going forward with the aesthetic changes that offer rideable values, the fairing, the bars, the seat. Uh, we've also got an increased aperture as far as the brake rotors are concerned. We've got an upgrade to the front suspension as well. Everything is now Showa all the way through and performing super sound. Um, haven't had a chance to put this bike on the road yet as it is actually winter time here in Idaho, but one of the things that we're working on in short order, sir. And can we you tap into your 12 year old a little bit and can you tell us a bit about the infotainment center because so, um, that's, so, a, that's a lot of Greek to me. Man, the infotainment center is cool and, they, and they've made some serious changes this year, not only to the infotainment center with their Skyline system, but with the controls, the switch housing, the groupings that they offer, they've mimicked the CVO from the 23 release. Um, I, I know it looks a little bit daunting because we've spent a lot of time getting to know and understand and love the controls that we've been running for the last several years, but this control group, if you give it a chance, is very, very easy to function. And one that they've copied kind of from their Pan America segment, and, and I'm a little familiar with that as well because I own one of those, um, but that, that control segment functions extremely well. Your audio is all on your right-hand side now. Your display and your screening selections are all on your left-hand side. So once your brain gets the idea to mitigate those controls correctly, the user friendliness is off the scale. The way I, I think it looks user friendly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it looks like it's easier to operate from what we've had in previous years. I too. truly do believe that. A yes. little bit larger, a little yep. bit easier to find your way. You can contour your thumb around the controls while you're riding without looking down. And the little bit larger doesn't hurt. No, I, you okay. are correct. All right, I, and there's a joke there, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna <laughs> let it slide. I got big paws, bro. Right, what <laughs> That's, I thought it was eyesight. We were getting that. But but you're correct. The the ability to not only relate to the control groups in more of an of an intuitive design and inflection is awesome. And the easier we can make that so we're not looking down at control groups and taking our focus away from what we're seeing in the rideable world in front of us mm -hmm. only makes us safer. So and then that, that translates into the display too. We've got like a 12.3 inch screen. That is, it? that is correct, sir. So we've got a much larger display. We I have, can ride without my glasses. I can actually you, see it. You, you won't need your bifocals. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some differences in the pucks as well on the internals of the fairing. And it's tough for you guys to see that in the shot we're in now, but these are now a push button. So they'll pop up versus a pull or a lift style fashion. Um, again, the jury's kind of out on that for me. I haven't functioned them enough, but I do like the ability to have that snap closed. The pocket design's a little bit deeper and your plug-ins stay in the same place in aperture. And you don't have to hold it open, right? No, sir. It's, it stays up correct. now. It stays up Perfect. with a little hydraulic assist versus just dropping back down on your hands as you're trying to reach into there. And they, they've initiated that type of technology into the vent, the, the wind vent as well, right? Because that is correct. That before is correct. we had a pop-up or we open or closed, we had two you're choices. pushing a button. Yep, right? Yep. And now we have a fully adjustable, right? We that can, is correct. We can actually contour the airflow 
and it's in and any it's given situation what we're comfortable with done in an adjustable manner that is not the push button which i am super stoked they got away from the push button the push button was something that within two to three years we were seeing some sticky activation you know some folks would have it jammed closed some folks would have it jammed open and and honestly sometimes they just didn't say anything and they rode with it in that way the vent is a very nice feature to be able to help reduce the amount of buffet that we experience or the amount of rain or bugs that come through the front vent if you're going along the edge of the south fork during the trout fly hatch <laughs> you're going to want that thing closed understood right? well i would say um unless i've missed anything and there's something else that you want to touch on i think we pretty much covered the basic changes that they've made with in 2024 um, i'm sure there's a lot more nuanced stuff that we'd love to discuss with uh, our clientele please come down uh, have a conversation with us sit on one take one for a ride that's always nice do not be shy get into your local dealership look at the bikes check them out come see us coffee's free bs doesn't cost anything and i'm fairly long-winded so have some time thanks for your time if you like this video remember to please like and share on uh, facebook instagram and youtube did i catch all you three got, yeah, i think got you all got three them, i think those are the three pla platforms that are, that are out there it's a couple of old so, school guys yeah. trying to explain that <laughs> should have had my kid in here telling that part <laughs> but please do like and share and we'll see you soon